Hello, and welcome to Western Washington History. As the title states, this will be about the history of Yelm, Washington. This will not be a deep dive, but more of an overview with more in-depth videos to follow. When it is over, if you liked the video, please give it a like. If you would like to see more local history videos, then please subscribe to my channel. There will be new videos coming often. Now that that's out of the way, let's begin. Originally known as the, which meant people of the grass country, the Nisqually tribe are the first people on record inhabiting the area now known as Yelm. The native people pastured their horses here near the river. The name Shelm was what the Nisqually called the area, meaning shimmering heat waves from the sun. The Nisqually were fishing people who came north from the Great Basin across the Cascade Mountains to settle near the river. Shelm Prairie was at the crossroads of Native American trails, the Bald Hills Trail leading to Natchez Pass over the Cascades as well as the trail to the Cowlitz River. They also had a trail that led up the Nisqually River to villages along the Machelle River and along the south side of Mount Rainier, which they called Tacobet. These trails were used by the Nisqually fur traders, the Hudson Bay Company, American settlers, and then the Northern Pacific Railroad. Fort Nisqually, located in present-day DuPont, was established in 1833 by the Hudson Bay Company from England. They worked with the Nisqually and traded them blankets and other items for furs they could sell back in England. In 1846, America and England signed a treaty and English territory was pushed up to the present-day Canadian border at the 49th parallel. The Hudson Bay Company would stay until 1869 when they sold to the U.S. government. The fort was recreated at Tacoma's Point Defiance Park. They have two of the original buildings there, the last two original Hudson Bay buildings left. One of these is the Granary. It is the oldest building in Washington State. Wyans, who were known as Kanakas, were the first non-Nisqually people to inhabit the prairie. They operated what was called a sheep station on the Yelm Prairie in the 1830s. Each shepherd was in charge of 500 sheep. They lived in small mobile structures as they moved around with the sheep. The Hudson Bay Company was against settlers coming to the area. They had a good working relationship with the natives and they wanted it to stay that way. But with the treaty came settlers. Edward Shearer was a shepherd and the first European to live on the Yelm Prairie in the late 1840s. In 1849, along with a few other shepherds, he went to Fort Nisqually and asked Dr. Tolmy, the man in charge, for a raise. They wanted $100 a month. Dr. Tolmy gave them an offer and they refused. Dr. Tolmy told them they were breaking their contract and that it was dishonorable. He must have really quit because at this time, John Edgar came to the Elm Prairie to take over the sheep station. Edgar married an Esqually woman named Betsy and had children. They built a house on the Elm Prairie in 1850. Edgar filed a land claim for his farm. Edgar and his family were the only people living on the Elm Prairie at this time. But by the fall of 1851, James and Bridget Hughes took a claim located just south of where Yelm High School is. George Edwards, Louis Bernard, John Hughes, Levi Shelton, and George Brazel followed. Another pioneer settler was James Longmire. He wrote, Having received due notice from the Hudson Bay Company not to settle on any lands north of the Nisqually River, we crossed the river and went to Yelm Prairie. James went on to help establish the park at Mount Rainier. There is a lodge there still with his name. Before modern roads, Yelm was the gateway to Mount Rainier. The War of 1855 had all the settlers scrambling for the blockhouse at Chamber Prairie near Olympia, all except ex-employees of Hudson Bay Company. They did not fear the native people because the Hudson Bay Company had always treated the Nisqually with respect. In fact, Dr. John McLaughlin, who had once run the fort at Nisqually, encouraged every Hudson Bay Company employee to take a native wife. 
This built trust with the people. Many of these families are still in the area today. John Edgar was hired as a guide by the U.S. Army in the fall of 1855. He led soldiers over Natchez Pass. They got into a skirmish at the summit. Edgar hid behind a large rock that today bears his name. Edgar Rock, near Cliffdale on the Natchez River, was used as a landmark for people crossing the pass and is over a hundred feet high. On their return, Edgar and the soldiers were attacked and Edgar was killed near South Prairie as they crossed the Carbon River. February 1856, Lieutenant Colonel Silas Casey reported to Governor Stevens that the blockhouse on the Yelm Prairie was completed. The men there consisted of 160 volunteer soldiers. William White was returning home from church on February 24, 1856 and was shot dead in his wagon. There were two women with him who escaped by taking the horses to get away. The women reported several natives having fired guns. The same day, soldiers found William Norcraft's wagon on the road to Yelm. They could not find Norcraft's body. After a few deaths and some stolen property, Governor Stevens ordered Captain Hamilton J.G. Maxson and his company to proceed up the Nisqually River, guided by a native prisoner, and find the Nisqually camp. On February 30, 1856, they found the encampment and attacked the Nisqually. It is unknown how many were killed, but most of them were women, children, and the elderly, as the war party was out of the camp at the time. On March 7, 1856, Norcraft's body was found near the place where he was ambushed. Governor Stevens wanted their chief dead. Chief Leshai was a great chief. He didn't want to sign the treaty because he knew it was a death sentence for his people. On November 14, 1856, Chief Leshai was arrested. He was betrayed by one of his own people for a reward. Four days later, his brother, Quimuth, feeling there was no hope in fighting anymore, gave himself up. He was taken by James Longmire to the governor's office. The war was over. The settlers returned to Yelm Prairie and their homes, although it would be a while before anyone would forget. The post office was put in and called Yelm Post Office in 1858. The first school was in a cabin owned by James Longmire. James met a teacher in Olympia and recruited him. His name is lost to history as is the year this school operated. It was at least before the 1860s. Also in 1859, the legislature approved a territorial road beginning at the Yelm Prairie and would continue east to Ashford and then across the Cascade Mountains to the Natchez River. In April of 1859, Wahilet, or Yelm Jim, or Squally Jim as he was known, was arrested for the death of William White on the Yelm Road during the war. Yelm Jim had been a resident of the Yelm Prairie all his life, and during the war he fought alongside Chief Leshai and Quimuth. Yelm Jim also killed Sluggia for turning in Leshai to the authorities. The settlers liked Yelm Jim and petitioned for his release. Meanwhile, two other natives took credit for Mr. White's murder out of respect for Yelm Jim. The settlers argued that the war was over and in order to move on, that some forgive and forget attitude should be adopted. The new governor agreed and Yelm Jim was given a full pardon. A new school was built in the late 1860s and was again a log building on the Yelm Prairie located across from the present site of the Adventist Church. In 1869, the bridge on the military road over the Nisqually River at McKenna was replaced with a ferry due to bridge failure. The ferry was owned by William Wagner. It was known as Wagner's Ferry and it remained in operation until 1883 when a new bridge was built. The Northern Pacific Railway came to Yelm in 1873. Known as the Prairie Line, it was a officially opened in 1874. Now they had a way to transport their agricultural and forestry products to Tacoma and the world. This really gave Yelm the boost it needed. A business and residential district grew at the intersection of the railroad and the old Bald Hills Trail. Tourists flocked the area wanting to climb Mount Rainier and would take the train to Yelm where their journey to the mountain would begin. Moses Metcalf moved the post office into his store in 1874 
Up to then it had been in people's homes across the prairie. Frank Longmire became postmaster in 1881 and moved the post office to his store. In 1883, a new road was built from Tenino to Rainier and then to Yelm. This included a new bridge over the Nisqually River, ending the ferry service. This is modern-day SR-507. The Nisqually were sent to the 1,280-acre reservation created by the Treaty of Medicine Creek in 1884. At some point, a new school was built at the site of the present-day elementary. It served all grades until the high school was built in 1920. The building then became a grade school before burning down in 1932. In 1901, three plats created the blocks, lots, and streets of the town. This included the Yelm addition to the northwest of the railroad tracks near Yelm Avenue and two southeast of the tracks filed by John McKenzie. Dow R. Hughes was the postmaster from 1907 to 1934. In 1925, he moved the post office to the Mossman Building, where it stayed until 1968. In 1908, Yelm had a population of 50. Solberg's first edition was located northwest of the railroad track platted in 1916. In 1916, an irrigation company was formed which allowed vast areas that had no water prior to become fertile farmland, and Yelm became a producer of red and black raspberries, blue lake beans, grains, and cucumbers. Soon dairy and cattle farms, sawmills, and shingle mills were built. By the late 1940s, the Yelm Irrigation Company went out of business. Solberg's filing of a second plat in 1923 finished off what we now know as Historic Yelm. At 7 p.m. in 1924, a fire broke out. Most say it started on the porch of the Wilson Hotel. Among the buildings burned were Patterson's Drug Store, Yelm Post Office, Drew's Confectionery, the Transformer House, the Telephone phone office, Yelm Cash Mercantile Company, Yelm Hotel, Wilson Hotel, New Method Repair Shop, Fashion Barber Shop, Pastime Confectionery, Yelm Meat Market, Yelm Barber Shop, Yelm Relity, H.L. Wolf & Company, William H. Keller, Nisqually Valley News, Thurston County Utilities Company, the U.S. Post Office, and a county storehouse. The loss was estimated at $125,000. Yelm officially became a town in 1924 as Yelm had three fires, one in 1908, one in 1913, and then again in 1924. One of the first orders of business after the town was incorporated was to create a water system to fight fires as well as a fire station. Many of the old buildings in Yelm today were built after the 1924 fire. In 1926, Yelm had a population of 400. Loggers, lumbermen, and farmers made up most of the residents. Many worked for the McKenna Lumber Company. There was also well-established bootleg alcohol production going on during Prohibition. Of course, this is not all there is to tell about this great little town. I will be making a part two in the near future. Thank you for spending your time with me. I have added a few photos that didn't make it into the film for your enjoyment.